Oh, the Audible, here we are again, back on the air. It is a Wednesday afternoon. You're welcome to join us on the program. You can catch us on MiamiDolphins.com. You can catch us in the future. Leon, well, I can't, let me, we got some, Leon, we got some, we got some roster changes we need to deal with. Right now, let me tell you what, my man Neon Leon, he's been put on timeout today. I've got him set in the corner. He's not facing the corner, but his back's to the wall in the corner. We've had a little bit of miscommunication lately. In fact, I think I'm going to have you guys that, that, that want to get involved here. You need to vote whether we should let him out of timeout or keep Leon in timeout for maybe, I'm thinking maybe a week, three days minimum. We'll find out, but we'll, we'll do that. Anyway, you're watching The Audible. You can catch us on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page on a delayed basis, MiamiDolphins.com, or you can catch us on Twitter. If you want to get your questions in, hashtag The Audible, and make sure when you call, when you send your questions, make sure you vote on Leon in or out. Kind of neutral on that right now. Joining me from MiamiDolphins.com, Alan Poupard. And Alan, I'm a little bit fed up with you, too, to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you what, it's about 84 degrees outside. He comes in here whining about how he needs a sweater or a jacket or a sweatshirt. And you're a Canadian guy, man. It's not 84. I thought you had that thick skin. I don't. I do not. I've been lived here for way too long, and the man. skin has really thin. Plus, it's not 84 in here. It's not 84 it's in here. It's air conditioning. Come on, man. It's freezing in here. I've got a short sleeve on. You know? yeah, I'm, I'm speechless. Uh, come on, man. <laughs> no, you should be speechless. All right. <laughs> Let, let's go ahead. Let's let's go ahead and go through Rossman. First of all, let's go through kind of injury today. Um, Laramie Tunsil back at practice. That's really good news. Very good news. You know, I, I, you know, I knew he fell down or was told he was fell, he fell down in the, in the shower, sprained his ankle. My thought being, well, look, if you did sprain your ankle, fall in the shower, it can't be all that bad. Uh, evidently, this was an ankle that he had some work done on in the past, so that may have been part of the issue. Brandon Albert completely removed from the injury report. He's expected to play. Two players missed the, those two guys missed the, the game against the Titans. Three guys that didn't practice today, Rashad Jones, groin injury. That came out of nowhere. Uh, Jordan Cameron still working in the concussion protocol. And Xavier Howard, knee, not working out. Now running back Aaron Foster missed the last three games because of hamstring. He practiced on a limited basis. Some thoughts that he may be available this weekend. Also limited were Issa abdul Kadus uh, with a knee. Marquise Gray. I guess it's not Marquise Gray. It's Marquise. Marquise Gray. Calf, Jelani Jones. I shouldn't pronounce that any differently, right? He's good, Jelani Jones. Jenkins. Jenkins, Jelani Jenkins. Maybe Jelani Jones is probably the wrong way to go, but Jelani Jenkins put myself in timeout for a short period yeah, of time. Totally. That's long enough. I'm back. Jelani Jenkins with the groin and Anthony Steen ankle. Anthony's probably uh probably gonna be ready to go, I would imagine, if they need him. If they need him, do you yes, uh, it's gonna ideally be they don't need him. All right, so let's get on to the roster as we know it right now. Dolphins added uh Chimdi Chiqua, is it Chimdi? Chimdi. Chimdi Chiqua. Chimdi Chiqua. And, and Benny Benwickery. Very How's that very for well two done. cornerbacks is, out there? You know, there's a lot well of play-by-play -play guys that don't want to see that in, in a game situation. Gone yesterday, Billy Turner, Dallas Thomas, Isaiah Pede, Cole Misi went on IR earlier this week, and Jamil Douglas was let go off the practice squad. So those are the flush, that's the flush out group. Um, and you those guys. One, and Leon Orr. And Leon from the, squad from, from the roster. practice squad to the active roster. So that gets us up to date on where we are as far as players coming and going. And, and a bit of a surprise yesterday. You know, I, I think that you can see the frustration with both Adam Gaze, Chris Forster, uh, the offensive line, uh, and everything that's been going on offensively. Pretty clear indication of that yesterday when they, let, when they released Pede, uh, Turner, and, uh, and Dallas Thomas. Well, and, and Coach Case has been talking for a couple of weeks now about accountability, and yep. if guys aren't going to get the job done, they're going to be gone, or we're going to find other guys who will get the job done. So um, the suddenness with which it happened yep. was a little bit surprising. The fact that Thomas and Turner are no longer on the roster, may, maybe not so much. Maybe the, maybe the timing of it. Maybe. Yeah, the timing a little bit. But I, but I think when you watch them play, and these guys have had plenty of opportunities, and they've done some good things, but for the most part, they just can't pass protect in this league that's been their Achilles that's been their Achilles heel and, and uh, I think you know it came to a head on Sunday with that game when when they just couldn't you know just couldn't protect Ryan Tannehill uh for for the most part and so it's time to move on and look I I you know it's unfortunate to be in this situation as a football team but I think that's where this team needs to be right now they need to decide who can play who can't play if it's young guy give him experience see if he's good enough to to play and get better as they move along but guys that have been doing this consistently for 2 3 years you know if, if they can't get the job done now then it's time to move on 
I think it look for people that, that are gonna gonna be able to come in and compete a little more. Well, and, and the other <clears> thing too is when when he first got here, Coach Case was very adamant about saying what happened in the past doesn't matter. I'm going to judge him from what I see from the here on yeah. out. Thomas and Turner, as you mentioned, are guys who didn't have that much success the past couple of years, but he gave him a clean slate, yes. and then it hasn't gotten better for the first five weeks of the regular season, so now it's like... You know, okay. Look, I'll say this, though. It's a little bit tough to put a guy that hasn't played tackle you know, in a long time, put him, especially when you're a guard, because you know it's such a different thing. You know, If you're a tackle out there, you set up, you've got to get depth. Correct. Right. These defensive ends are so fast. You've got to get – I mean, watch the guys, how they set with their leg back and kick that leg back to get depth. And you got these guys who are used to setting up as guards basically at the line of scrimmage. Yep. And it's very difficult for them to make that transition in short order. So you got to give them that. But it's kind of a, you know it's kind of one of those things where look they they evaluated how they played a guard and tackle and decided that they can do better down the road somewhere. Yeah, else. they didn't. The decisions were the decisions weren't made strictly just on, what on happened Sunday's on game. Sunday. No, 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 not at all. All right, so let's go ahead. We get um, let's get some questions in here. Mike Harley, forty two. Are we going to get any more linemen? Um, I don't they, know where they, they signed, are. They signed Sam Young. They signed Sam Young. You didn't talk about that, Sam Young. I, I happen to be in. It was funny. I was in. Uh, I was in Whole Foods yesterday. Give me a, myself a little healthy lunch. Going healthy lunch, and I walk in. Who who walks up next to me in the uh, salad bar? Sam Young. Sam Young. I say, Hey, Sam. How you doing? Good. What have you been up to? Oh, I just signed. Who'd you sign with? I just signed with the Dolphins. Yeah, good to know. There you go. <laughs> you know, so breaking news. It's funny right how you, I was going to go on the phone and uh, and shout out breaking news, but I thought I'd let it pass. So uh, I don't know. I, I think I think what's I think what this team is doing right now is looking at every practice squad, looking at anybody that's out there that's a free agent, anybody that's not on a roster right now, or any or I would imagine too that they're looking at rosters for possible trades or different things they can do. Trades probably to me probably. Not much of an opportunity yeah, there with the roster tough. where it is, and you, you just you know teams aren't aren't trading right now unless they're trading guys from, you know that, that are that are backups, practice squad guys, or or those types of things. Correct, but here's the thing: right now they have eight offensive linemen on the roster, yeah. and which is not a high number, and they have ten defensive linemen. They also have seven cornerbacks, even though Zayvon Howard yeah. was injured. That's all. Those are high numbers for those two positions. So at some point, it wouldn't be surprising to see them at an see offensive some, lineman. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, you're watching the Audible here, Kim Bo Camp or Alan Pupar with you. You can check us out on uh, on Twitter. You can go ahead and send in Twitter hashtag the Audible, and you can go ahead and ask your questions. We'll answer them as long as you go. And don't forget to vote for my man Neon Leon. Should he be out of timeout or keep him in timeout for a little while? We got any votes coming in there? No, no. Uh, all right. I try to get something. I try to include you in the show. I try to make it a give and take. That's all I'm trying to do. And you guys, you stiffed me today. All right, yeah. You take, take, no take. Vote. There's no vote. Means he say, <clears throat> you he take, say take, take. He's, well, if there's no vote, then I'm the ultimate judge as to whether he comes out of timeout or not. Right now, he's staying in. Who, one for timeout, one for keeping him in. You got to just prod him a little bit. You got to poke him a little bit and get him going. Who's next to be unemployed? I, I don't know who you can unemploy at this point. I, I mean, you know, you, you kind of thinned out that roster to the point now where, um, I don't know, you, you know, well, I talked about Cole Misi going in injured reserve. That, that opens up a spot, a linebacker spot. You know, I don't know how they, you know, how they deal with that, or, or who's going to be the guy to come in there. Donald Butler, they obviously have been, he's been playing a lot. Uh, they like, um, give me forty six. Neville, Neville they like Neville Hewitt to some degree. Big plays, big mistakes. There's kind of, ooh, they want me in timeout now. J one nine two seven one. Come on, Jay. Why do you want to do that to your boy? Put but, me in timeout. Oh, hey, I'll take a, the vote. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Instead of focusing on who would be the next guy to be yeah. unemployed, I would look at the positions that have extra numbers, and that's a yep. defensive line, and that's a secondary. Yep, no doubt. Uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a tough situation. Let, let's take a look at – let's try to take inventory of where this football team is right now at this point. you got the Pittsburgh Steelers coming to town. That is going to be a huge, huge challenge for this football team. Uh, ben Roethlisberger – uh, you know, tough to bring down when you get in there. Uh, he's got a great uh, receiver in Antonio Brown that can catch everything he throws up in the air. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, especially when you're coming off a game where you gave up, what, 235 yards rushing uh, against the uh, Tennessee Titans. Uh, and you think, okay, you know, that now, now you got this team coming in. Um, they're going to have their hands full. And this team's going to have to play certainly better than we've seen them play any game this year, including the second half of the New England game and the game in Seattle where really felt pretty good about that the team after coming out of that game. But that's all kind of 
taken away in the wash, been taken away in the yeah, wash. Yeah, I mean, hands full with the Steelers is putting in mildly. I mean, you look at the teams in the AFC, they're tied for the best record at 4-1. and one. Yep. And I, I would I would put it out there that right now they're the most impressive looking team of those four and one teams. More impressive than the Raiders. Yep. More impressive than the Broncos. Patriots with Tom Brady back obviously are really really yep. good. But that that Pittsburgh offense looks a complete joke. I mean how good it yeah, is. Yeah, they, they are. They are, and they're starting to, their defense is starting to pick up and, and, and play a little bit more aggressive and and do the things they they've normally done in the past. Except when you mentioned that that they will be without possibly their best defensive player, and that's defensive end Cam Hayward. He's got a hamstring. And they've had some problem against the pass. Right? Their secondary struggled a little bit. At times, but they're yes. coming off a second half where they yep. completely shut down the Jets on Sunday. So Cuban Rose. Kim, do you think Dion will play this year? Dion Jordan. His name always seems to pop up on these shows. And and, and to me, Dion is a one hundred percent complete non factor as far as I'm concerned. Am I wrong? Well, there are reports that he had a second knee surgery right. last week. So and and you're looking at He's eligible to come off the PUP. I, right. if I even forget which one he's on. Next, week. next month, next week. Then yeah. there's a three-week window to along do something with Chris with Culliver, along who, with Chris we'll Culliver. Get a question about along and, with, and Zach Vigil as well. Yeah. And I would think of those three. Chris Culliver is is by far the most likely. No to doubt to play. Let, let me ask you, so you: you 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 come out and you watch the practices, or at least as much as the practices they allow you to see. Have you seen Deion Jordan take a running step? No, all no, year? not in a long time. Yeah. No, no, in the running step, no. No, a running step. No, you know where you're. We're no. working out, so you no, know, even all the, re- the rehab he did in front of us early, earlier on was stationary. No, he yeah. does not run. So. Yeah, and he's yeah, so, I think so. Anybody who thinks he's playing this year, I think so yeah, I, I, I think you would if 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 Deion Jordan is in your mind as someone that's going to come out and and help this football team a little bit. I think you need to get that out of your mind because I just think he's going to be a non-factor. I, look, I would say he's going to be a non-factor going forward, not not just this year. I just not. I, I guess he's he, uh, uh, you know he's kind of like Leon. He's in my doghouse too. He's in timeout too. Well, no, no, he's way. He's in deep, deep timeout. He's in deep, dark timeout. Leon's just in, you know, temporary timeout. Uh, do we like the Jets? Do we do like the Jets to us a few years back and run like forty times a game? So I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try to, to, to figure out what this guy's trying to say. Should we go and run the football forty times a game? Is that, is that what Maybe you, not. Is that that's that's what he's there? asking. Maybe not 40 times, but the, the argument could be made they should be running it more, especially yeah. with the pass protection. I, I, I agree with that. You know, and, and it kind of muddies the waters now with Arian Foster because I like the idea that, that Adam Gaze threw out there uh, a lot, two weeks ago when he said, look, we're going to boil this down. Forget this four-guy rotation. We're going to go down to it. But, but yet we saw three guys in the running back in the backfield uh, last week in the game against Except Tennessee. J- J- Although Jai got, got the majority, the carry, the majority yeah. of the carries. Uh, no doubt about that. So, I, I, they, you know, to me, they need to find that guy. Now, if Arian Foster comes back this week, obviously he's going to get the opportunity to get some carries. Alan, how does this team find the guy that's going to be able to be able to carry the ball, whether it's 20, 25 times a game, if you don't give him that kind of work throughout the this point of the season? Well, that's the thing is that they have they have to increase – you know the number of the, the other issue carries. also the other issue is the defense is on the field the entire game they had 44 offensive plays yep. against against Tennessee on Sunday yep. that you can't do anything offensively with no that. I look it's 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 you know I, I'm I, you know I, I'm sounding like a broken record because I say it every week and after every game I mention it to to coach Gaze when he's doing his press conference up there you you can't punt the ball six seven eight times a game have five three and outs and then ask hey when how come we're not running the ball more well you're not doing anything when you're punting the ball that time and having five three and outs, you know, to 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 through the course of the game. Oh, by the way, a couple of other series were two interceptions. Yeah. So so how do you get the offense going? I think that's you know that to me is the biggest problem with this football team or biggest question presenting uh, that you can present to this this football team is when are you going to get this offense going where you can have the defense off the field a bit where you can be the team that has sixty to seventy plays in the course of a game instead of being on the short end of the stick when it comes to a time of possession plays and and uh, and rushing yards uh, you know that that's a that's a tough hill to climb in any league much less the national football league no i i totally agree with you i i do think there needs to be a little bit more of a commitment to the running game and because i i would say their most impressive offensive player on sunday probably was a jj we ran the ball hard there were a couple of times when he turned what should have been yep. Minimal gains or even losses into into positive plays, so stick with it a little bit more. There there have been a few occasions this year where it's been third and one and they've yeah. thrown the ball, 
establish some sort of running game to where it's it's dependable yeah. to, to to be able to convert those situations. Uh, P, you're uh, you're watching the Audible. I'm gonna rejoin here. You're watching the Audible. Uh, Kim Bo Camper with you, Alan Poupart from MiamiDolphins.com, who covers the Miami Dolphins. Um, you can go ahead and send your questions in via Twitter. Just hashtag the Audible. You can catch us on the MiamiDolphins.com Facebook page. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just as you reach for water, I need to kind of clear my throat. You can see us on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page. Uh, how long is that? Uh, how long till that comes up, Leon? Yeah, right, get back in timeout. About an hour from now, you can catch it there, or you can catch us on Twitter or MiamiDolphins.com. And you can send your questions in on Twitter at hashtag Miami Dolphins. Why is Tannehill not more mobile out of the pocket? Coaching decision or his? Um, I, I think that's a little bit of play calling. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, ta- I'm not talking about running because you need to run because the pass rush, you know, is closing in on you. I'm talking about getting out of the pocket, kind of getting out there in the open, throwing the ball, which I, which I think that, that uh, Ryan does extremely well when given the opportunity. Well, the only problem with that, the, the two-part thing here, number one, if you roll them out, you're cutting the field in half. Yes. And there's been an issue with receivers getting open, Ryan finding the reopen receivers. Yep. Now you're going to, you're gonna, in essence, double that issue. Number two – I, I, I would love, and I've been saying for so long now, yeah. I want to see Ryan escape the pocket when it collapses and there's right. a lane for him to take off. It would no, seem- I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. But also, look, I don't have a problem using half of the field, taking up half the field, because you get that run-pass option. Plus, you've got, plus, I think he's been more accurate throwing the ball down the field or throwing the ball when he's out there, the pocket running around. Just, just kind of what I've seen. So coaching decision or his, I think probably, I think when it comes to, when it comes to like you said, Pocket collapsing run, that's his decision to make, right. yes or no. I think some of the other ones, when you when you have a design to get him out of the pocket, obviously those are coaching decisions. Joey Bag of Donuts, we need an identity, either running or passing. You know, I, I don't think you can be an either-or team in this league. You, you can't be an either-or team in this league. <clears throat> what's can't what's Pittsburgh's identity? I can't what? tell you how many people I've talked to over the years that say, look, the, the, the NFL is a passing league now. You don't. Why do you even bother running the football? Yet every coach I've talked to, every coach I've talked to, is just the opposite. You need to establish the run. You need to defensively, you need to stop the run if you're going to win football games. So it's funny how all the coaches <clears throat> know the importance of the running game and stopping the running game. Yet a lot of fans out there think this is a league of just throwing the ball down the field and, and you know, the hell with the running game. Well, and what was Seattle's <clears throat> offense when they were going to straight Super Bowls back-to-back? Yep. It's Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. It's Russell Wilson on the move. Yep. What's Pittsburgh's identity? Yeah, running Pittsburgh, the football They, they, do, they do both. I yep. mean, they, they have Le- Le'Veon Bell, yep. who's tremendous, and they have Antonio Brown and Ben chucking it up. I think that this whole notion of the identity of an offense, yep. move the chains, that's the identity well, well, that's that's you want. That, I mean, that, that's exactly it. it. You know, that, that's it. And, and, and don't make... You know, don't shoot yourself in the foot as you're going along the road. No, and here's a, here's another example: is New England. You've seen New England certain games; they'll run the ball 35 times. Yes. And other games, Brady's just chucking it all over yep. the place. Yep. Right. Yep. No doubt. I mean, but that's you know, but there, there's a football team that has the ability to morph into different types, a different type Correct. of team offensively, based on what you're doing defensively or what they want to do to attack you defensively. And and you know, there's very few teams that find themselves in that situation. However, New England's been there for. <clears throat> Let me see. How long has Brady been there? About 15 years? 2001 is when he first played. 15 years. Mm-hmm. So they've been able to do it for 15 years. <laughs> and they did it when he was out. And they did they it when he was out. Yeah, no was no out, doubt so. about it. All right, uh, Twitter, can you teach pocket awareness or is that um, instinctive? Um, well, you know, I think this. I think. I think day from day one of tra- look. I'm gonna put it, go back. Day one of the OTAs and mini camps and all those things. I think Adam Gaze's goal was to teach some pocket awareness to Ryan Tannehill. Try to get him moving around the pocket, taking advantage of what's there, moving up when you can, sliding up, sliding sideways, all those types of things to work in that three yard pocket or that three yard square behind the center to make things happen. Uh, and obviously, it's not. Well, <clears throat> I don't say it's not paying. Sorry, it's not paying dividends, but. Is it Ryan not getting out of the pocket, or is it the pocket is collapsing uh, too too soon for him to do much of anything? I think it's a combination of both, yeah. at least in my mind. Or both at different times, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and you saw in training camp, they were doing a bunch of drills where they had guys yep. swatting away at Ryan to help him feel where the pressure's coming from. During the game, there's going to be pressure that you want to have to be able to feel even though you don't see it, and that's part of pocket presence. That's not an easy thing to teach. 
Uh, Miami Dolphins, 1926-1926. Do you guys feel like Arian still has something left to make a difference this year? If he stays healthy. If he stays healthy. I mean, that's, you know, but, but you know, you, you kind of, we, we've kind of been on a pattern now where you pick guys up that have had injury problems over the years, over the course of their the latter part of their career or for the last three or four years prior to coming here. And typically when you bring those guys in or it's typically when they've come here, those injuries have continued to flare up on them and, and been an issue. Yeah. So No, I, I mean, but here's the thing. There's no questioning the guy's ability. What yep. he has above and beyond everything else is he has a great vision, a great yep. feel for running the ball. Again, he, he's had a nasty history of injuries, yeah. especially well, and, in and recent look, years. And, and look, for Cole Meese, he's been the same thing, you know. Yeah. When Cole Meese has been healthy, he's been a pretty good player. He makes some impact plays. You know, tough physical guy out there. But, man, he's, he's been healthy. I think his rookie year was the only year he was he- year he's healthy for an entire year. Other than that, last two years ends up on the injured reserve. You know, so there's certain guys out there that you got to realize that, hey, look, for whatever reason, whether it's bad luck, whether it's the way that their body's built, whether it's the way they condition themselves. Well, I mean, there's a lot of different factors in there. But some guys just, you know, once they start getting multiple injuries, it, it just seems to be something that in this league in particular that, that you don't shake off very easily. No, and sometimes it's unfair to put the, lab- the label of injury prone yeah. on a player, but if the guy keeps getting injured, it, he's injury prone. Yeah, it's a, I mean, you can't, you can't, <clears throat> you can't hide from it or, or what is. It? All right, Alan, <clears throat> we know where we're at. One and four, tough stretch coming up. We've got Pittsburgh coming in. What does this team to to, need to do to turn things around? Can they turn things around with the guys they've got on this roster right now? And Adam Gaze and his staff kind of prodding them to do what they need to do. Uh, and, and every time you talk to them, it seems to be, you know, the easy thing is, you know, if it's one guy keeping making mistakes or if they make the same make mistake, right. but it's like every play, it's two or three guys, this guy, that guy, this guy's doing it this time, that guy the next time. Can they turn this thing around? Is there still time to get, you know, I'm not even talking playoffs. I'm talking about getting to the point where they can be a competitive football team offensively as well as defensively because they certainly have been, haven't been competitive offensively the entire season. Yeah, no, it, it, we're five games in. And we're only in, we're not even at the halfway point yeah. of October yet. So yes, there is time to get things straightened out and become a competitive team, the one that can win, yeah. not necessarily will win, but one that can win every week. But they need to tighten up a lot of different things, starting with the uh, with the protection. And again, we have not had the projected starting offensive line yeah. once all year. It was supposed <clears throat> to happen last week, and then Albert comes down with an illness, yeah. and then Tunsil has the fluky thing. The expectation is that this is going to be the week. It's finally going to be. To, let's see how it looks when everybody's there. And, and you know, it looks like it looks like at least right now where we're sitting, that there's a fairly decent chance that they'll have that those five guys, right. your starters, for the first time since the season began. And we'll see how that. Although you've got guys that are coming in, they're going to be a little nicked up. Brandon Albert trying to get himself kind of you know strengthened up after a, after an illness over the week where he lost 12 pounds and. You know, I mean, that kind of thing, you're dehydrated. you got to get yourself back up. But expecting, you know, he practiced or he's off the uh, injured list, so he's going to play this week. Big question on Tunsil, if he's going to be completely healthy. But he seems to be heading that direction, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, how do you explain why some teams get lots of injuries and others don't? Well, you know what? If you've been watching games around the National Football League, everybody's hurt. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got multiple injuries. Maybe they're not guys, big name guys, but everybody. I I would say I would guess this: the Dolphins have had their share of injuries. I'm not so sure they're any different than any other football team in the National Football League right no, now. Go ask San Diego, which lost yeah. its best wide receiver in Week One, lost its best cornerback uh, Week Three or Week Four. Even Ben Roethlisberger on his weekly radio show this week said, "Too many injuries on that football." Too many team. Because, because why? Because they hit they hit in practice. practice or is too hard. So. Yeah, a lot of it is just luck, and then that's why a lot of times you'll see the teams that make that make deep runs in the playoffs yeah. are the ones that have luck with injuries. You know, I, you know, I think the other thing about it too is you know, it, it, I was watching because I watched a lot of games during the during the, when they played the Thursday night game, or Thursday game. So you got to see some weekend games. I watched the you know the Monday night games, the Thursday night games, and, and you see all this stuff. And you know, I, I also think part of this injury situation. And I'm not faulting players. I'm not faulting trainers. I'm not faulting coaching staffs. But you know, I think they're more, you know, they're more apt to have a guy pull pull a guy out and not have him play because of an injury that maybe 10 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, guys would fight through it and yeah. play through it. Yeah. 
And so you had guys out in the field that were injured, but they would just they, you know, you'd sprain an ankle, they just strap it up like a cast, get out there and do the best you can. I, I think the nature of the league right now doesn't allow that or is not in that frame of mind. So some of these guys that are out that are not playing, you know, like I said, a number of years back, prob- probably would be out there playing. Well, that's a very good point you make there. And and again, and you made sure it's the nature of the game now. Yeah. The, the the salary cap is a function of it. Yeah. You don't want to risk an injury to a guy who's making big money. I think agents have agents have even agents now, whether you like it or not, have their say as to whether a guy's playing or not. Get in his ear, hey, you know, you probably shouldn't, you know, you probably shouldn't play. You probably should let that heal up a little more. There's a lot of factors that go into it nowadays. If you're dealing with a player of a certain stature, yes. I mean, the, the the rookie on the team and the first no, no, year no, player no, doesn't no, get any no, say. Absolutely, that. no, no, no doubt about that. Uh, okay, another Twitter question. If the line is not intact, does it make it hard to evaluate Tannehill? I, I think that's been a conversation, Alan, all, all week long. It is especially you know when you look at the at the game last week, how you know how rough of a day that Ryan Tannehill had, both as a player and both as a quarterback standing there getting uh, getting run over by you know the, all the, the entire defensive front of the uh, the Tennessee Titans. Um, I, I think the line. I think you look at that, and certainly the line not being you know being where you want it to be certainly had a, a lot to do with Ryan's play last week. And, and I think you've got to take it in and factor it in when you evaluate Ryan Tannehill. And I know Adam Gay's doing it. If you listen to, or if you've seen any of the press conference, read any of the, 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 the quotes that came out of Adam Gay's this week, he said, look, how do you evaluate the guy? How do you fault the guy? I think the number was like what 48% of the snaps, 49% 44. of the snaps, whatever it was, he, he was getting hit as he tried to throw the football. That, that's tough on any quarterback. No, and if you recall the sack by Derek Morgan, I don't remember what quarter it was, but Tannehill basically had taken three steps back, and, yeah. and, and Morgan was right on top of him. Well, I think that and the game, the first quarter, I think. The yeah. game on Sunday, more so than any other game this yeah. year, he ba- he basically had no shot. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have any help from his offensive yeah. line. So, In other games, it's been more balanced where he's had opportunities to make plays, uh, but the game against Tennessee was was impossible. To let's gauge. not let's let's look. You know, let, let's not forget. Now there there are times where. You know he's got the ball and looks like he's going to let it go, and then he just pulls it back down for that one, that one. You know whether it's a half a second or whatever it is, and that's enough for guys to put the net for the pressure now to get to him and cause him problems out there. So you know not everything's on the offensive line, even though it's a makeshift offensive line, and you've had a lot of different guys in a lot of different positions. You know some of that, some of that has to fall on the shoulders. Of Ryan Tannehill and also of when, when the ball's out there. That's right. part of pocket presence. No, no when you have to get rid of it. Yep. Here's one of my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, people that come in on the, on the program every day. 38 WD, 38 double D LVR. Interesting. Interesting, huh? Hey, he's a regular. We like it. As long as you're a regular, you're all right with me. There's just a lack of cohesion on the offensive line and the defensive line. We're getting gashed. Well, we certainly got gashed defensively last week. I, I can't argue that as far as that. I, I really thought that the, that the defense – uh, after Cleveland had had started to make some headway when it came to run defense, started playing a little bit better, and then and then the game last week against uh, uh, against the Titans, they they did just get gashed. The Cincy game, they also actually fair were pretty good against the run. Right. The thing that was very troubling against the ten, against Tennessee was those runs outside well, yeah, where I, they're I mean, not setting the edge. It's like and you want it's yeah, so at some point it's like get it done. I, you know, I, I'm not sure what their what their and the white, the white nine is supposed to keep everything funneled inside. Yeah, and but that's you not got guys, happening. everyone's, you know, play goes away and everyone runs down the line of scrimmage and the bootleg comes or, or whatever. But, yeah, you've got to get a feel. There's got to be contained. Look, you know, you, you know, defensively what you want, you want to create a pocket. You want to create this. Right. And, and don't let anyone get outside, force everything into the funnel where you've got more bodies. But when you have no edge, when you have no lip out there, when you have no run support coming up field, you know, a soft corner just makes it uh, – and, and, and I, probably as bad as I've seen it all year, last year, or, or and maybe and just, maybe tackling. maybe it's just the fact that Tennessee just decided to take advantage of of the lack of run support out there. Really, the only guy I see out there creating any run support is is Rashad Jones getting up the field and, and making things happen when it comes to to run on the perimeter. And there was some bad tackling as well. That, oh, yeah. that didn't help. No, no, no. All right, uh, timeout vote. Four four votes for you to stay in, Leon. Is that it? Is that for you? Four votes for you to stay, or four votes for me to be in timeout? Well, Leon, two in. I got, I got four votes to go in. Leon's two votes to go in. 
much time we got left here in the program? We still got a little time. I might be able to catch up. Oh, we got no more time? We got to go? A little bit of a, a little bit of a choppy show here, Alan. You know, I, I got thrown, I got thrown off my off balance and got thrown off my game by your need by and your desire. By taking a shot at he my, had, at my actually, gold. Let me put it this way: He actually took the shirt, put, took the sweater off of Neon Leon's back while Leon was already in timeout. Took it right off his back to come in here because you felt it was too chilly in here. Does that mean I go in timeout? We'll see. We'll, we'll have a new vote going out next time. We'll be back Friday. We'll vote on uh, on Alan whether he should go in timeout and. And not, but the Leon Leon's going to stay in timeout at least until Friday because I have the ultimate say. I'm down four votes to two, but my vote counts for eight, so it's ten to four in favor of Leon staying in timeout. That's going to do it for the audible day. Alan, thanks for stopping by. Always a pleasure, man. It was my pleasure, and I'm glad I, I was able to do it and Very stay nice. warm Very at the nice. same time. You know, I, I, you know what? I, you're, you know, I thought a lot about you, but now you've kind of taken a little bit of a nosedive for me. You know, I might have to put you on waivers here for a little while. We'll see. That's going to do it for the Audible today. We'll see you on Friday. Have a good couple of days.